For example, if I have had four previous experience, four previous bad experience, let's be more specific, of eating at a particular restaurant, right? Um, when given the opportunity to go to that restaurant by a friend, I will say no, I don't want to go there because I've had four bad experiences eating at that restaurant. Um, I'm inferring that my, my next experience will also be bad, so I choose not to, right? So my decision making is contingent on um, reference. And that's basically all that's being said. Um, we'll integrate this, I'll integrate this in, in, in far more um, complicated detail in a moment, but it's important that you understand this idea and the association between reference dependency and um, agent decision making ability. Okay. Uh, next point, 5A. Um, prospect theory emphasizes asset changes rather than asset level. So, emphasis is placed on the fluctuation, right, on the percentage, right, on the fluctuation rather than the level, right? So, to say that something Let's just say something has a value, just arbitrary. Something has a value of um, uh, 50,000 units or $50,000. We cannot really make an assessment on the value that that has without contextualizing that value with respect to the amount that's changed, right? And we'll see how this applies uh, later. So rather than saying all things being equal, you can get more of something, right? All things being equal, you can get more of something. Um, uh, we would think sort of intuitively, oh yeah, all things being equal, I can get more of something, I'll go and get more of something. However, our decision-making processes that we find in our day-to-day -day lives are far more complicated than that, right? It's, um, I can get more of something, but I might lose something else. If I get more of something, then something else might have to be sacrificed. That's usually how our decision-making process uh, unfolds, right? Um, so all things being equal, um, there's emphasis placed on the change, right, rather than the level. What's more important to us is the degree of change, and we'll see what that degree of change marks. So percent of change, or degree of change, percent, or degree of change. And we'll see what this percent of change, this degree of change, uh, marks in, in a minute, right? So rather than talking about levels in general, it's more about a degree of change from an initial starting point, right? Um, and I don't, I don't want to jump the gun, but so that, that should be that should be clear. So plus or minus uh, with respect to some reference point, right? Plus or minus with respect to some reference point, right? So what's what's important is not just the flat percent. I mean, not the, the flat level, but the degree of change. Plus or minus some reference point. So this is sort of visually more holistic, right? So it's a it's a clearer understanding than just sort of abstractly talking about reference point X, um, we can talk more precisely about the degree of change from a starting point to X or from a starting point away from X, right? Okay, assets change, um, the changes in assets pertain to gains and losses, obviously, right? That's sort of obvious. And a single reference point implies a single decision, uh, a single choice, right? What we'll do as we progress through this is we'll see that um, it's not always the case that individuals make one choice. <clears throat> so the application of prospect theory to only one choice fails to recognize that sometimes decision making requires multiple choices, right? So that the theory has to incorporate um, sort of a holistic account of decision making as evolving through choices, right? My choice today affects my decisions um, tomorrow, right? So that it's not just specifically always the case that it's just one choice, but again, general. Okay, let me, um, let me uh, cite Robin Dawes. She gives a, a really good explanation of what we're about to do. And again, uh, I haven't even really begun the discussion of the theory yet. This is just to give you an idea on a very, very general scale of what we're looking at. We're looking at the, um, the relative change with respect to a reference point. With respect to the reference point, we're going to be looking at gains and losses. And we're going to see how those gains and losses affect um, decision-making under circumstances of risk. So here's the quote. Robin Dawes in, um, in Everyday um, Irrationality, how pseudoscientists, lunatics, and the rest of us systematically fail to think rationally. It's an amazing title. <laughs> and here's what's said. Prospect theory is based on the idea that people eventual, um, people elevate gains or evaluate, sorry, um, 
Prospect theory is based on the idea that people evaluate gains or losses from some neutral status quo point. As assumptions consistent with the adaptation level, findings that occur not just in perception, but in virtually all experience. That is, we adapt, we as choosers, as decision makers, adapt to a constant level of virtually any psychological dimension and find it to be neutral. In a similar way, we adapt to the reduced light in a movie theater, or when we enter it, finding it not particularly dark after a few seconds. You walk into a theater, for the first second it's dark, then your eyes adapt and you sort of, you, you can make sense of it, you can operate in that environment. Um, and then readapt to a much brighter light outside when we leave the theater, finding it not to be unusually bright after a few seconds. But since choice varies by framing, um, by framing it as gains or losses, it cannot reveal underlying preferences. Okay, so what does that mean? First thing to recognize is that, um, in her analogy, you're walking into a theater, the movie's really, really dark, the movie theater's dark, for, for, for a few seconds, it takes your eyes uh, time to adjust to the darkness, eventually your eyes adjust to the darkness, right? There really is no preference built into your eyes adjusting to the darkness, it just does, right? So if we refer to the initial standpoint, the initial state of affairs, before I entered the movie theater, and look at me entering the movie theater, then obviously the loss of light has changed my ability to adapt. For a second, and then I adapt. Similarly, when I leave the movie theater and I go back out into the light, I've now adapted to the darkness in the movie theater, and walking into the light causes my eyes to have to readjust as well. That takes a second or two, but then I readapt, right? So it's not that human beings, and in our process to make decisions, we can't adapt to our new environments. It is the case that we can adapt, and we often do adapt to our new environments. Um, what is important is a recognition of how that adaptation influences, or that perceived adaptation, influences our decision making. Right. So I'll get into more specific examples in a second. Um, so number six, people respond differently, obviously, than to gains and losses. Um, they overvalue losses relative to comparable gains. Now, what exactly does that mean? Right? What does it mean to say that you overvalue losses with respect to gains? What I've done is I've um, incorporated um, four graphs, right? Graph A, B, C, and D. And what I'm going to do is spend time explaining the significance of this graph and how this graph, these graphs rather, um, and the relationship between the graphs pertain to our assessment of risk and the weight that we pay, play on um, the decisions that we make. Okay.